there are about two trillion uh, barrels of oil under the ground on this planet. And we know that or else we look pretty much everywhere. I mean, there may be a pocket or two, a few barrels in it that you miss. But basically, we know where oil, oil is. Initially, there were about two trillion. We've used a trillion. We've got about a trillion left. So we've been pumping more oil and more oil every year than the year before. We can't continue to do that because we're about to hit a point at which most of the world's oil wells have passed the halfway point. And when they pass the halfway point, they depressurize and you have to start putting something in the well to push the oil out. And so it starts taking energy to get energy. This one's been free. The first half was basically free. Um, but now you're going to have to start putting energy in to get energy out. And you, one, you get worse oil out as you go toward the bottom. And secondly, uh, you can't get it out as fast. So the supply is going to begin to come down. It's come down at 3 to 5% per year per year, compound view. Okay? Now, if you know about compound interest, save a penny and you know, 300 years from now, it's a multi-million dollar affair and so on. Uh, compound interest is being used, well, this is going to be compounded. But what's really important, and this, this is called peak oil at this point, at which half of the oil is gone. Uh, but the problem is, demand for oil has been going up even faster than the supply. We can't really fill it. That's why there's shortages in many places around the world. That demand is going to go nowhere but up. China and India are expanding their economies dramatically and they're basing it on oil. They're planning to use oil to do it. So this gap between the demand and the supply is going to get really big really fast. And everything is going to go to hell in a handbasket. Yeah. Because our economy is completely, totally dependent on oil. Everything we do is dependent on oil in some way. Well, again, that's the other thing is you get the easy oil first and the oil that remains is more and more costly to get out. And it's a harder and harder place to get, like deep sea, frozen, Siberian heart, et cetera. Yeah, there, there is uncertainty and there's debate about it. And there's a range, as Andrew said, on, on the when we're going to get this people at the point. Um, but most of the independent judgments say it's going to be somewhere around 2010, 2012, just a few years from now. Um, the oil companies in Saudi Arabia and the Bush administration are saying you're 2035. Yeah. Okay. Uh, not where it's a long way off. But even if it's 2035, we've still got a big issue because how are we going to replace all the automobiles that are out there burning oil? 18 months after peak oil, a year and a half after we hit peak oil, gasoline in the United States will cost $15. Why do you think gas is going down now? Because Saudi Arabia is busting the yeah. tail yeah. to keep the supply. I think, I mean, it, ma it makes possible. sense. They need, they need and, to cause consumer fear. So. And because some of the petroleum companies have actually cut their profit margin a bit. Yeah. They've been doing okay lately. Yeah. <laughs> so they can afford to, yeah. uh, in order to keep the price of the consumer yeah. down a bit, because they were afraid that yeah. if the price had stayed up there, they saw what was happening. Yeah, exactly. People were getting concerned about it. We'd be switching. It's all hurt. I mean, it's in their interest to use every last gallon. And what they have mostly is reserves that they have on and the equipment to get it out. And that's going to become extremely valuable. So this is like an investment to them, which is like buying a, a rare coin today that you know is only going to get more valuable over time. And eventually you'll sell that rare coin for 10,000 times what you paid for it. You can just hang on to it.